Hello, my name is Stuart Adams and I'm a Senior Analytical Chemist at Ferris Science Limited UK. I'm here to talk about some of the ICMS work or ion chromatography mass spectrometry work we've been doing on food contaminants such as chlorate and perchlorate and some of the more problematic polar pesticides, glyphosate and glufosinate and some of the relevant metabolites. In recent months we've had glyphosate has been in the news about how it's going to be re-registered within the EU and we've also been finding other contaminants such as chlorate and perchlorate in quite high levels in food since 2010 and in fact there's been active monitoring of the levels so that we can assess the safety. This technique is one way of doing the analysis based on a quick generic extraction method developed by the EURL in Europe but we've had problems with some of the the, the liquid chromatography conditions that they've suggested so we've taken a different route using ion chromatography linked up to a mass spectrometer. It gives us the separation we need with the detection limits that are required. The extraction method we use is generic. It's, it's abbreviated to QUIP, QUIP, which is Quick Universal Polar Pesticide Extraction Method and it's a freely available method. We don't use any of the chromatography conditions recommended in the method. We've taken a different approach. That's where we've gone for ion chromatography, tandem mass spectrometry. The ICMS method that we've developed, we've been using in-house for approximately nine years and we're currently looking at sort of the new technology, the more sensitive mass spectrometer to reach some of the more challenging detection limits, moving towards that multi-residue method. So we're not just doing one analyte, we're doing many analytes. If you look at figures one, that's the sort of basic system configuration. Um, figure two shows the IC sort of gradient profile method. If you look at some of the results we've achieved for the validation, you can see that we're validating at 10, 50 and 100 ppb or micrograms per kilogram for most of the commodities that we're looking at and for most of the components. We've got 13 pesticides and contaminants in the mix and we're achieving very good recoveries and relative standard deviations for both wheat samples and for the grape samples. I'm talking a bit about the validation results. If you look at table one, you can see that we're validating at 10, 50 and 100 micrograms per kilogram for the, most of the 13 pesticides and contaminants. The, the recoveries and the relative standard deviations meet the criteria set in the, the current Sante documentation. We've got good relative standard deviations. We've got good recoveries. If you look at figure three, we're getting good peak shapes for some of the very important analytes such as glyphosate, glufosinate and its relative metabolites. One of the issues we've had with some of the other liquid chromatography systems where we've been trying them for glyphosate is, is retention time stability. If you look at figure four, you can see we've got a fairly stable retention time for glyphosate over an, what we would describe as an average batch. We're losing 0.3 minutes over the run, which is about approximately 16 hours long which is within inside the SANTI guidelines for acceptance criteria for identification of the pesticides. We've also used the QUIP, method, QUIP extraction method for the extraction of glyphosate in infant food. We've validated the method at the levels 5, 10 and 50 micrograms per kilogram with the MRL set at 10 micrograms per kilogram and what we're getting is good recoveries and good relative standard deviations which again are passing the SANTI criteria for method performance. If you look at figure five, that shows the, the type of response we're getting for glyphosate in infant food. Also during the infant food validation, we we're looking to validate the method for chlorate and perchlorate. Um, it was an organic baby food that we were looking at, so we weren't expecting to find pesticides, which was quite correct. We didn't find any glyphosate. We did, however, find chlorate at 38 micrograms per kilogram and perchlorate at two micrograms per kilogram. If you look at figure six, you can see sort of the relative responses of the blank sample or the, the actual sample we were using compared to the internal standard responses. So although we haven't conclusively proved the method act will actually will work all the time for chlorate and perchlorate, we have demonstrated the ability of the method to detect residues in the baby foods. So in conclusion, we're getting good selectivity and sensitivity for the pesticides that we're looking for, both in the cereals and the grapes. We've with the method showing promise for baby food. The identification criteria set out in Sante were meeting for generic batch runs and the methods meeting all the method validation performance criteria set. Thanks. We're also planning to validate the method for more matrices, not just looking at anionic pesticides but also looking at cationic pesticides.